Sierra, outside. And the ball of some baby green snakes went outside. She was gone for a little while. And she came back. And she was kind of trying to sneak in to go upstairs with her back turned to Jane. And Janet said, uh, Sarah? Janet started laughing hysterically. Sarah turned around. She said, Sarah, what's in your pocket? Sarah slowly started to open up the pocket and one little green snake's head popped out. And she said, um, Sarah, take that snake outside. And Sarah said, but mama, it loves me the best. Well, Sarah had been given the gift of unconditional love. Sarah's love was at a level that many of us will never reach until we are passed from this earth. Jesus came to earth to teach people about love unconditional love. Today, sitting in this room or participating with Facebook or Zoom, we can think about love. Some of us don't really know what unconditional love is. Some of us have felt that unconditional love from others, but we have not given that unconditional love to others. Strings sometimes are attached. Sarah had no strings. Her love was a love from God. She loved unconditionally. Yeah, sometimes she'd get mad, so she'd get upset, and she'd snap her fingers. Sarah, beautiful Sarah, her eyes that expressed the love her heart felt. Her hugs were not small pats. Oh no. Her hugs were strong, pull you in tight hugs. The I love you hugs. I'm gonna miss those hugs. Sarah would not want her memory to be, to make you sad. Sarah would want her memory to be a happy one, one filled with love, a love that would make you stop and look around to find something to give that unconditional love to. Some of you can remember a time when you were in a store and when you hear your name, it's called, and it would be Sarah. She would not call that name quietly. Or all of a sudden feel a hug and it would be Sarah. Her wave and hand kisses were so filled with love because they were. Sarah's love was on a level that we really don't understand. I'm going to strive every day to reach Sarah's level of love because Sarah's love was a Christ's love. Excuse me. Christ does not want us to live a life that's hateful. Because the consequences of a life bring sadness, confusion, loneliness. No, Jesus Christ wants us to live a life filled with unconditional love, just like Sarah did. Why was or why is it so hard to live as Jesus wants us to? Why? Prejudice? classism, economic divisions, social injustice, being taught how to hate, 
are all reasons people do not know how to love, really love, a love like Sarah's love. In John 15, 18, 25, it reads, In the world, if the world hates you, be aware that it hated me, Jesus, before it hated you. If you belonged to the world, the world would love would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not have sinned. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. It was to fulfill the word that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. When the helper comes, who I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who comes from the father, he will testify on my behalf. You are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Janet and I and our sisters were taught the gift of generosity. Basically, you shared what you had with others. Janet wasn't wealthy. Many times she had what she needed and no more. But she shared what she had. I remember several times talking with her about doing something on a Saturday. And she would say, I can't do that because I'm helping someone to do something, move or, or organize something, or someone was sick that she was looking after. Or she needed to cook something, usually large amounts of something, um, to help our church with feeding the poor. I would be amazed. My economically deprived sister was helping so many and feeding the poor. And by feeding the poor, that often meant cooking part of the meal or help, and helping to serve it. She would call later and report on how many people they served and how not a drop of food was left. Now, let's think just a little bit about Janet's cooking. Close your eyes. This helps you to think of eating her dinner rolls or flavored angel fruit cakes. I liked her lemon flavored angel fruit cake the best. Strawberry was good. So was butter pecan. Peach lime was loved by some, but it does are just okay for me. The good news about living fairly close was that I would sometimes get to taste the new flavors before anyone else in her family. I begged her for years for the recipe. Do I have her recipe? No. But I did buy some of the ingredients for her sometime. I still have no idea how she did it. Janet had the most beautiful red hair when we were growing up. Long red hair that would shine when the sun hit it. The sisters, we would all run up and down the hills of our neighborhood with our neighbors, the Pickerings. Mary Pickering was Janet's best childhood friend. They had many adventures together. Some of them were kind of dangerous, but no one got seriously hurt or injured badly or died. So, mother was never told about them, so she was never worried. They would be out, we would be out among the woods just having, playing and having adventures. And mom would honk the horn when we were supposed to come back. And then we would return as soon as we could. 
Jan and I live with our grandparents in Osceola, Missouri during our high school years. And our grandpa Strange had a lot of cattle on his land in Roscoe, Missouri. And they were worth quite a bit of money. We got a call that they had been stolen and they found them in the stockyard with the, uh, the individuals who had stolen them. And these um, people, they needed money. They just hadn't learned how to work for money. And um, my grandmother uh, told us who it was and she said, gave us some very good advice. She said, you don't need to talk to anybody at school about it. It's not any of their business. This kind of put us in a dilemma because these people, one of their daughters was one of our good friends. And it was her older brother and father who had uh, stolen the cattle. So the next day we got on the bus and um, we, um, our friend was one of the last people um, to, that the bus picked up. Well, everybody was a asking us about this and we didn't say anything. I mean, we didn't say anything. And so we went and sat almost to the back of the bus and I was by the window and Janet was by the door. And when we stopped at this individual's home, there she was, as she normally was, standing at the end of the driveway and um, her head was down. Um, her body language was like, I wish I could just disappear. She got on the bus. The bus driver glared at her. And then he watched her walk down the aisle as the other kids taunted her, calling her a thief. Some of them even kicking her. The bus driver said nothing. Actually, he was just waiting for a good fight. All the kids were waiting for a good fight. Um, nobody would let our friends sit with them. Came to Janet, our seat. Janet stood up, offered her a seat between us, and then sat down and and scooted her in. And they had done this ritual before. I mean, like not a little a little scooting, but like scooted me in, and I was just jammed up against the window. Janet cleared her voice. Everybody was looking. She said our friend's name very loudly. And she said, you are my friend and you will always be my friend. I don't care what your family does or what your family did. You are my friend. And then she looked at everybody that was looking at her in the bus. And she said very loudly, and if anybody has a problem with that, they have a problem with me. Nobody wanted to have a problem with Janet. Everyone was so disappointed that there wasn't a fight. Imagine that. Someone had brought, uh, had offended your family by stealing from them, and you're not going to fight them. You're going to be their friend. Some people look like they've never seen or experienced anything like that. Our friend set up. The first time I'd seen her set up ever. She held her head up high. She knew that she had people that loved her unconditionally. And she was our friend until we graduated. It seemed to me from that point on, she walked straighter, she held her head up. She knew she had people that backed her. She wasn't alone. She wasn't a nobody. She had unconditional love. 
In Romans 2, 1, and 9 through 10 it reads, Therefore you have no excuse, you all, whoever you are. When you judge others, or in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself. The judges are not doing the very same thing. There will be anguish and distress for anyone who does evil. But glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good. For God shows no partiality or no favor. Janet and Sarah have touched many lives. And we are better because Janet and Sarah were in our lives. Our lives would not be the same if they had not touched us. They were both baptized members of the Community of Christ Church. They both loved going to church and loved the people of the church. Even though sometimes Janet would get angry, she'd get her feelings hurt, or something that I would say that that's something that um, doesn't really matter. So take a deep breath and it'll be okay. But she still loved the church. And most importantly, the people that went to the church. And when I say church, not only the people in the building, but people that had a love, a Christ-like love in them. We would talk for hours about God, the church, and life. Now, Sarah really loved the people in the church. Because of her disability, she didn't understand theology. She just knew that Jesus loved her. And that was all she cared about. We should all take on the realization that Jesus loves us and puts everything else second in love. The way that Janet and Sarah died was tragic. And I would like to read a poem that I adapted that says what I think they would say if they were here. And the author of this poem is unknown. And it reads, the title is, I had to leave this way. Please try not to relive our death in your mind. As from our viewpoint, it was very different from the way we see you have thought about it. To us, it seems almost like a dream. Yes, we were so sad to leave you and to leave everyone. Every one of the people who cared for so much, that we cared for so much, know that we feel good and our souls are enriched. Enriched with new learning and understanding. We, and you know, here I'm going to stop. You know Sarah's disability. And that is gone now. And she has the ability to understand and to think and to see things as people with a normal IQ do. Now that we feel good and our souls are enriched with new learning and understanding, we are still able to help you, but on a more powerful scale as our suffering has ceased. Every one of our lives is created with love. In divine wisdom and timing, everything happened as it was supposed to. You could not have stopped or changed anything. There was no other way. 
the day after the fire, we went the day after the fire, Haas called me. We got down there and I knew immediately that they were gone. So the day after, I went back with my sister Ruth and was joined by my other sisters. We walked through the ashes and we looked down in just disbelief. And as we're kind of trying to dig through stuff and find stuff, which there's nothing there, three men from a church, Chad, Russell, Tim, came, because Sarah's big dog, Sergeant, was still lying there, burnt. And he came to bury Sarge. We buried him deep in the ground with a pile to him, get him covered him on the wall. And we said a prayer of thanks. He thinks that he was there with Sarah. And because I had seen the dog carcass and how it was laid out, you know how dogs sleep on a hot day and they're all laid out? That's the way he was. And that I knew that they had been asleep and that they had been taken away, uh, they had died because of the um, smoke inhalation, the gases and such. And it was a dream to them. They did not feel the flames of the fire. I'm standing there and in my mind's eye, I see the back of John Bellaby, and he's holding hands with Janet and with Sarah. And I can see their backs. And it's so peaceful. And they're walking slowly away from me. The interesting part was there is this white light that surrounded them with nothing else but light. And as white as the light was on the exterior, as it became closer to the figures, it was a bright glow. And I could feel the love and peace that they had slowly walking away from me. God is love. Love is the simplest, the most powerful way to describe who God is and to describe our relationship to God. Consistent throughout the scriptures is the assurance of God's love for us. Through the burdens of Janice's life, she knew love. She knew the love of her husband, her son Haas, her daughter Sarah, her church community, her friends far and wide, and her sisters. Her sisters that were related, or her sisters that were not related, and some sisters that she just picked up along the way. Now Sarah, who knew more love than any of us, she too knew this unconditional love of family and friends, aunts and uncles, cousins. She knew the love of all kinds of animals and even some types of plants, flowers. She loved everything. She loved life. As we celebrate their lives today, take part of that love that Janet and Sarah showed for you and expressed to others away with you today. Love allows us to live through the storms of life. And for my sisters and myself and our family, this is a real storm. But we know the love and security of Jesus Christ. 
and allows us to stand firm as the winds of despair, hate, and unknown swirl around. Janet and Sarah knew that kind of love and shared it with all of you. Thank you, thank you for being in their lives. Our lives were changed because Sarah and Janet were in them. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of love that you sent to us in the lives of Janet and Sarah. The sisters have a Facebook messaging page and we pretty much talk to each other constantly throughout the day. Kind of got to be started when Nancy was sick and we continued it on. Um, and Janet sent us this poem not too much, not too long ago. And uh, I would like to share it with you now. When tomorrow starts without me, is the name of the poem. When tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand. Then an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above, and that I'd have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But when I walked through heaven's gates, I felt so much at home, for God looked down and smiled at me and told me, welcome home. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're far apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. We're having a time now to remember and tell stories of Sarah and Janet in our lives. And um, we have Russell and Mary Love, and they're going to um, have microphones, and they'll walk up and down the aisles. Um, they, they'll be cleaning the microphones off after each use. And um, if you are sitting in the middle of the aisle, just move to, you know, stand up and move to the aisle. Um, if you want to share, just stand up and Ruth or I will um, go ahead and um, you know, motion for you to, to go to either Mary or Russell. So we're going to start off with family, and then Mary and Russell both have something to say. And after they have um, said, um, then we'll open it up to others. This will be thinking. Now, I, I had them wear like aprons or things because, you know, Janet was into cooking and, and doing things. So, are there family members that would like uh, to speak? Oh. I've already been up here, so I'll be very brief, um, because I really want to hear your stories that you're going to tell about Janet and Sarah. When I think of Janet, I think of determination. I think of beautiful long red hair. I think of a helping hand. She would always come into my house, and the first words out of her mouth is, what can I do to help? and her eyes were very concerned, and she was the happiest when you put her to work. Um, the story about Sarah and the little critters, she inherited that. Sarah inherited that from her, big, from her mom. Um, Janet, when she was little, crawled up in a tree, dug a raccoon out of a raccoon nest, and brought a baby raccoon home to us, and my mom helped us raise it, and we had that thing for years, and um, so Janet, so Sarah definitely came by honest. When I think of Sarah, the first thing that comes into my mind is being hit by a cannonball in the back. She didn't even know I was going to be expecting it, but it was her hugging you. And she was so glad to see you. Um, the last words they both said to me were, I love you, Ruthie. And um, it couldn't be better about the last words. Janet's my sister. As a child, Janet saved me off the train bridge 
the train was coming, my friend sat and she carried me off. She was always saving me. She was tough, a born fighter and a born survivor. She was a great cook and always brought a ton of yummy food to every gathering. She had a big smile and a bigger laugh. She was fiercely proud of Hoss and Sarah. She was always willing to help. She made us all say I love you before we got off the phone. What a great habit. She enriched our lives so much. She will be dearly missed. And I'm sure right now, she's laughing and drinking a tall, cold glass of lemonade. Sarah was pure kindness and love. That's why animals always loved her. Sarah loved Janet and Hoss so much. Her face was so beautiful, oh, those eyes. She was popular. She loved her boyfriend. I saw Daniel out there earlier too. She loved her family. She loved her friends. She loved to swim and she was a good, she was really good at it. She loved to sing and dance to karaoke and boy, did she love that. And boy, did she love Chuck Norris. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's hard to imagine life without her. I love you, Janet and Sarah, till we meet again. She said, well, what does Sam want? And I said, well, what does any teenager want? They want money. And she goes, oh, well, I've got this really good idea. And Janet was an artist. And she was going to make a little flower and put money in it for him. And she was really excited about it. And Janet's artistic ability went way beyond cooking. She could draw. She could sing. She was a beautiful person, and she had a beautiful family, and she's going to be very missed, and so will Sarah. And we love them, and I love you all. Are there other members of the family that are not good to
lot of the people who don't want to be or on Jane's side of the state, <coughs> all relatives know me as Steve number one. So, we were visiting you last night with our best friend, and had an epiphany that there is, it's not the first time, it just it came to me a lot of the spirit last night. That, uh, and today, listening to everyone do, how many times have we heard the word love? A lot. And I'm here to testify to you that there's power in words. And I think there are how many, 150 people here, maybe 200? Each one of us into dark conversations with people we know and maybe people we don't know with, you know, I love you. That um, there's power in words. And we can see by the response of people who come in contact with that unconditional love that it does have an effect. So use the power that the Lord has given us.